Let's uh, and welcome to yet another episode of the Current Affairs program. I'm Cheku back again with the program. And uh, we, every one of us know that the technology has made our lives easier. And uh, amid the pandemic, uh, the technological innovations, uh, we have seen a lot of them and uh, all of them have uh, made our lives easier. So uh, we have an addition uh, in, in the technological uh, innovation list and we are talking about the Better app. Uh, it is an application designed by the Department of uh, um, uh, Revenue and Customs uh, for uh, the, um, the taxpayers, the, the, the micro taxpayers, to tax, uh, file their tax online. And uh, we will talk in depth about this. And uh, for this, uh, I'm joined by uh, Ms. Kazang uh, W. Samdup, a specialist, uh, media and communications, and uh, she's from the Department of Revenue and Customs. So, uh, first off, I would like to thank you for joining BBS. La. Now, a uh, very important thing, uh, what is this Better app? Uh, the Better app was, uh, was an initiative that was at the back of our minds for a long time, an app for taxpayers. And, um, and especially when uh, we had a, a finance minister meet us for the first time in Department of Revenue and Customs. And um, our first meeting, he welcomed, he says, any out-of-the-box ideas. So that was always at the, at the back of my mind. So when we had this coronavirus uh, situation that came about, I said, now, why can't we go ahead and develop an app that will keep our taxpayers safe, mm -hmm. will keep our, our tax officers safe, and it'll give if all of us another option. So based on that, we put a proposal up to the ministry, and the ministry approved the app uh, development to go ahead on 8 December. Then it, after that, it was like a race against time because then uh, the coronavirus, uh, I mean, uh, the lockdown happened mm -hmm. and we were in a 40 day lockdown. That means the whole app had to be developed virtually. And in fact, I was so fascinated because when I looked at the participants, that means all regional officers also were on uh, at the same time when the developers were asking questions and they were developing the app, I saw 62 participants. And I thought, wow, that even if it was normal times, we'll not get that many participants mm -hmm. to come in yeah. and, and work on something like this. So anyway, I thought that was very positive. And from there, it, it, we didn't look back and everybody worked hard and we came up with this app. The only downside of it was we couldn't test it really with our target uh, audience because how to reach out to taxpayers, you know. So that was the, so, but we said, let, let us introduce this app, let us go ahead with it. And as and when we have feedback from, uh, from taxpayers, we'll do a little tweaking. Yeah. And that is what happened. Some of the things that information that we needed, but it wasn't very necessary for the taxpayers to, uh, to provide. So those are the areas we made it no longer compulsory. Yes. If they wanted to provide the information, yes. Otherwise, it's, they could just continue. And the app basically is very simple to use now. All right, so uh, it comes to my uh, second mm -hmm. question. So how, how, how does the user um, use this app? Because uh, we, we see a lot of uh, apps uh, being developed and uh, most of the apps, you know, after being used for some time, they go to nowhere. So mm -hmm. they end into total waste. So uh, I'm sure um, you must have also taken this into consideration, the user friendliness of the app. So uh, how, how do the users uh, use this app? Uh, it's it has about four or five steps basically b very simple to get the OTP to get themselves registered and most of the information is already f in the back end it's a standalone app which is not tied to any big system or something like that because we kept it simple so like you have we already have the information from customs all the whatever was imported for the whole year mm -hmm. and uh, simple things like which which we could feed into the app it's there so and it's specially designed, as I said earlier, for the 11,400 plus who are the beneficiaries of not having to pay the estimated tax for till 2024, I think. So this, this, this uh, app 
is will help them once we can get them to use it and about whether it'll be useful next year if this group still uses it i can see it being useful with a little more better right. tweaks till 2024 because then it they don't have to come to uh, our offices our officials don't have to go to them and our officials can concentrate on the four from the areas and the zonkok headquarters and it it kind of makes the whole uh, collection and uh, and uh, uh, and uh, collecting of taxes yes. much more easier. It reduces the administrative burden also. So I'm hoping that uh, this year is just a trial period mm -hmm. and version 1.2 can be much right. better. Right. So now, uh, <laughs> ma'am, you, uh, you we mentioned uh, something about OTP. Yes. Um, but n this is one-time password. Yes. Uh, now, uh, because considering um, the number of uh, business uh, operators, yes. uh, especially in, in remote parts of the country, they are, you know, uh, I can't generalize, but uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, most of the micro businesses are being run by uh, like people who are not really, you know, highly educated or yes. who, who don't really have so much knowledge about this technology. So, uh, look, how, how are they supposed to know this, what, what, what OTP is all about and when they are supposed to get the OTP? Okay. What we have provided for them is we realized that after the app was launched, launched on uh, February 9th, mm -hmm. again, uh, his, uh, our finance minister, honorable finance minister, uh, made time for us to launch it and during the launch also he kind of reached out in his message to all tax tax officers in all eight regions and said y'all must create a help desk mm -hmm. you must even if they come to the office teach them about the app help them with the app so with such support from from our, our, our minister uh, we felt that we can go ahead with this mm -hmm. and then we thought more. Now we need to reach out even to the flaw flung, the group that you just mentioned who may be challenged to use the app. So then again, we had to get permission. Mm -hmm. And there's a, we hired a, 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 it's a call center in Babisa, and they're known as Samling Infotech. And afternoon time, they have their clients in UK and all. So from two o'clock onwards, they're, they're busy with their own clients. But morning time, was available for us from nine to one o'clock. So we kind of got into an agreement with them mm -hmm. where we use their facilities and, the, and their agents and the list, the, 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 the category that we are concentrating on is that 11,400 okay. plus. Okay. So individually, all the, whoever had the right phone numbers mm -hmm. in our system, the list is given to them and individually they are being called. Nice. And uh, if their numbers are correct, mm -hmm. so then we ask them, have you heard about the app? Mm -hmm. And if they say no, then saying, then we explain a little bit about the app. And if they say, oh, we have a problem, we know we don't know how to use, saying, do you want us to file for you? Okay. Because there's no money, there's no payment involved. So we are even offering to file for them. And uh, initially we, we started a WhatsApp group, so it was even easier, all everything, they will send us their details in WhatsApp. But I think in the last like uh, two weeks or so, uh, we had too much of activity on WeChat. Mm -hmm. Oh, did I say WhatsApp? No, it, it's WeChat. WeChat. And, and WeChat, they, they kind of blocked us. Okay. They thought, oh, something is strange is happening. So unfortunately we cannot reach out because we found that most of this target group are on WeChat. Yes. That's that. That's what I'm also thinking because mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, because as I was saying, uh, they might not really understand what this app is all about, and uh, they might also, you know, create a lot of uh, doubts in their mind. So I, I, I'm thinking like they might not really cooperate. So how cooperate are, are they? In initially, they're a bit, uh, they're kind of skeptical, mm -hmm. but when we tell them that you can call back a toll-free number because we're reaching out them tr through a mobile number, but they can call back at a toll-free number. So I think that kind of establishes that we are really from uh, the department. And also they actually call us back on the mobile phones, they call back. And then they say, can you help us? So, so I think it's been now, we have been in operation for uh, uh, this is the third week. So I think uh, the, the rumor uh, m uh, modus operandi or something they mm -hmm. say it's all powerful in Bhutan more than our traditional media so word of mouth is so powerful mm -hmm. so it, it, it would have they would have discussed it among themselves and they, we might have been now like oh did you get a call 
do you get such thing so maybe that also helps that will help also yes. and we have helped quite a few uh, for people to file so it's like uh, like for say for example i would say like tempo zong uh, tempo arasio also caters to people from gaza right. so imagine uh, gaza people don't have to come down here yeah. Yeah. so how effective it is you know so similarly like this we have others uh, we only have eight regional offices which cover remote areas so it helps both 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 parties yeah. to speak so uh, the, uh, you you mentioned about 11000 plus yes. uh, tax mm -hmm. payers uh, who are actually exempted uh, from paying taxes filing taxes till 2024 mm -hmm. uh but now they are exempted from paying tax look why is but this system you know pushing so hard you know so that they, they all, it's small and micro small and micro very small group mm -hmm. i mean it says the and especially in this environment in this kind of 2020 mm -hmm. uh, i don't think whether they are small or big i think all had a difficult time mm -hmm. so so for this group uh legally they might uh, be uh, obliged to still file in their return mm -hmm. because income tax act 2001 still says no matter if you're an exemption party if you still have a license you have to file your taxes at the end whether whether you pay anything or not but you still have to file so so and if they don't do that uh, and we could actually uh, have to impl uh, impose the fines and penalties which is like 100 nultrums per day and that can go on till 3 months uh, after which for 3 months if you just calculate is like 9000 And then after that, it, you go, you'll go into the non-filing category, mm -hmm. and it's thirty thousand. So for people who don't have to uh, file any taxes, and if they just, it's just so simple, you know, just file your returns, and you get, you escape all these fines and penalties. But many of the people are not aware. So we thought that uh, uh, this, this is the perfect platform uh, where we can also bring this, what I'm talking about, across yeah, to the yeah. taxpayers, to to realize that. Uh, you think you have you you have got away with not filing mm -hmm. but at some point when your license has to be active and you require to again make it active and come back now everything is in our system it's in our ramis so the the system will start calculating all the fines and penalties and then you might be crying and going from door to door and and asking for exemptions you can you can just uh, you know avoid all that and uh, just comply just just that people mm -hmm. people don't have to go door to door you know yes. asking for yes. uh, forgiveness or maybe exemption yes. uh, so because uh, you you mentioned earlier that uh, and i have also heard that uh, that uh, most of the phone numbers uh, um recorded with uh, with the uh, with the licenses during the registrations are not correct and they are like like invalid and they're not reachable so uh, how is your department trying to reach out to them so what we found out during this exercise that we are, are, are it's ongoing with uh, with with them uh, with in our call center mm -hmm. every day three three reports are generated from our call center three reports and one of them is the miss call i mean like uh, the the numbers that are not mm -hmm. not accurate so the list is there so we have started compiling the list and in that 11400 uh, plus uh, i think on monday we have already called out to 7555 because these are three reports that are generated mm -hmm. every day so so from that list from the 7000 plus 2000 something are wrong numbers on numbers that have nothing but some smart uh, tax peer has put mm -hmm. in 11111 mm -hmm. and it's it doesn't belong to anybody uh, so you know we have scenarios like that yeah, and that yeah. that is about so we have passed this information to our tax officers uh, who might be going in similar areas and they will be telling whoever that they are I think that you'll have to up update your your profile information your contact details you have to and so again word of mouth we are hoping that will spread among yeah, the community right. and also i'm going to use this platform also to tell any tax uh, payer who has not updated their profile mm -hmm. especially telephone numbers to call 3999 or 3998 or the mobile numbers that we are reaching out okay. with to call us back and to update your okay. to call us back basically if you call us back then we can again call, uh, call you back and and we can update your information and uh, we hope we and um one of the very important exercises we will be doing after the tax season is data cleaning yes. 
So after after this, we'll be analyzing all our data in the and then updating maybe Ramis yes, information, yes. providing the information, so that they can. All so right. we have the information ready for so, next so, season. So the number is three nine 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 and three nine nine eight. eight yes. Now. Uh, uh, it is, it, is, it is quite evident that mm -hmm. um, not all the people have access to BBS, not all the people have access to information. Yes, uh, like. yes. So uh, I'm sure that uh, you, uh, you have also started or maybe thinking about collaborating with uh, other stakeholders about uh, disseminating this information because this is very crucial, especially for those people who are residing in a remote part of the country. So uh, now for them, yeah. How are you, are, are you collaborating with the local governments? Because they must, they will be the right people, right to go to, you know, people to. Traditionally, yeah. uh, before this app came about, uh, I think our, 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 our officers who go to the field, they already have a link up with the local government. Yeah. So they would have had a, a date and a time when they're going to visit all the shops and things. That was traditionally done and it worked. But now this 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 tax season is a little different because of coronavirus. Mm -hmm. We could have continued doing that. We could have continued doing many things, but uh, but in the future also, uh, we hope that we can enhance that by even looking. We I don't know if you've heard of some NGOs have come up like something like digital sitar mm -hmm. that want to go out to the rural public and all. So I'm thinking, I just saw, I read about them a few a few days back and I'm like, oh, the next tax season, if you can link up with them. them. And there's another one called uh, VTOB, VTOB. And they, they also have some program where they want to reach out to the youth. So these are the things where we can kind of work with them and get them right, to work right. together. This all is right. the future. So if, if, if it works out, this is where we are less, thinking. Less, less, less. And also, I mean, this is like, uh, I always believe that you cannot teach an old dog new tricks. So the other way we can reach is if things are normal, mm -hmm. that maybe we can just start, maybe a team can go to also uh, colleges, the final year students, and we could have uh, sessions with them where we teach them about tax and we can teach them about better and so that when they job, join the job market, no. there's al they already know. So there are many things that I'm thinking of. The, these are the future plans, which during lockdown, it gave us a lot of time to think about what, what next. Now, mm -hmm. uh, another issue that comes up is uh, because, because you have uh, um, uh, put this and and have made this online portal because uh, you know in this digital era I mean as I mentioned before technology has made things easier but then it has also made things complicated now just taking example of uh, us as well you know the, the educated lot let me say uh, even because because we pay tax every year once mm -hmm. a year and uh, while we have to do it online, yes. we, we have to go through a lot of difficulties, you know, having to ask for the, ask for the password to the RAMIS, yes. you know, username, you, we, we, we tend to forget that because it is once a year. But now, I mean, you are targeting this, this app is being targeted for those, uh, I mean, micro business holders, operators, mm -hmm. uh, uh, okay, in the urban areas and uh, in, in the rural areas. So um, how do you intend to, uh, because if you have to keep calling them every year, 11,400 plus uh, clients every year, I, I, I'm, I'm thinking it is going oh, to be very taxing. Let me share with you the statistics, which is very interesting. Um, when we hired the Sumling Infotech, uh, we, we actually started operations from first. Mm -hmm. And when we say for one month, you actually don't get that one month. So up till the date 20th of March, we calculated and we broke it down to, because we said we work only half days for nine to one. So we broke down the 20 days into divided by two, we got 10 days, mm -hmm. minus the two holidays, they work on Saturdays also, minus we got eight days in the month of March till the 20th. During that time, we in eight days, we called 7,555. That's in eight days. So if, if we have, and, and that also only, they only have 10, 10 agents, so to speak. Now, if we had the budget and we could have hired more, it's like in, in one week's time, we can okay. reach out to all. It's, it's very simple. Okay. It's very simple. And, um, and the back end from this from this eight days of extensive 
uh, uh, reaching out to the target audience. Uh, we've had quite successful, about 3,000 people have downloaded the apps right. and they've used the app from eight days, so which is quite, if we, if we had started in January and if you had the app ready, I mean, if all the ifs, uh, by now we would have been uh, way, but I, I still think we still have one month. We have, uh, the filing season has been extended by one month and I feel that this target audience will be, will be 11,000 something, we'll be yeah. reach out. Now, uh, this app uh, was uh, designed and developed uh, um, because people don't have to travel amid the pandemic and mm -hmm. to, to, to enable them to stay home and be safe from this pandemic. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, do you intend to use this, uh, use this app? If successful, do you intend to use this app beyond, I mean, the post-pandemic? Uh, if we have to, now we have to analyze yeah. the, the pros and cons and if we have to use the app, what are the other, other uh, other plus points that we need to add, how to make it even more user friendly, because we told you it was all developed during the 40 days lockdown. Mm -hmm. So, and um, we didn't have much budget. Mm -hmm. So we, there were a lot of constraints. So, and version 1.2, who knows, you know, and like I was uh, with the app developers, I was saying, uh, would be nice if in, we could have, like when you press a certain thing, mm -hmm. Then the it, it the it says in Zonka language, mm. uh, it's voice activated and yeah. it says, uh, put your CID number. Mm. Then you press another thing, it it it's, it yeah. speaks in Zonka and they're saying they told me that it is possible in the near future, but it'll be quite expensive. Yeah. <laughs> so you know you know you never know what what is possible in future. Like I've seen the bank apps now uh, instead of an OTP, they have a choice of thumb using a bit the thumbprint, maybe even this app we can have, we can progress to, the villagers can use there because we can link it with the census records and then we could even operate it using a thumbprint. There are many options, but we did what we could do in that limited period of time. So the, the sky is the limit, so to speak of. Mm -hmm. So uh, now I, I think this is my final question. Um, now you, you also intend to uh, bring about the budget reduction, you know, cost cutting uh, through this mm -hmm. app development. So how do you intend to do that? Uh, that is not exactly in my hands. Or mm -hmm. I, all I can think is that uh, for the taxpayer, like if he is living somewhere in, uh, in a remote p place and if, if traditionally speaking, like we have specific dates for tax officers right. to reach those areas. And if that tax uh, official, uh, a taxpayer is has some some other business or is not available at that time, then he would have missed the yeah. tax officials, and then he would have to come all the way down here to Thimphu, or depends on which region. And then the expenses involved, yeah. because tax officials can go only for a certain number of dates. So that is one side how how it benefit the tax uh, tax uh, payers, yeah. and the other side is uh, our tax officers. Yeah. So so if they have to go from post to post and all that can be quite an expensive yes. process and you know in the remote areas collection may not be so great so it's like it's it, it will reduce the administrative uh, cost for both parties yes. uh, mm -hmm. maybe if you have anything important that uh, we haven't covered I'll just give you one minute for me yeah oh uh, I I would implore taxpayers especially the the BIT uh, paying lump sum taxes mm -hmm. if they're listening to me please use this app because based on how this app is uh, used we can come up with a, mo a better app next year and uh, they need to come on board yeah. and we know we know we, we will have resistance in any app like uh, any any new technology will have I don't know if you've heard of the word digital lud uh, digital ludites mm -hmm. Have you heard of that term? Yeah. Okay. So we might be even faced mm -hmm. here with whether with, from taxpayers or tax officers, we might have those people among who resist anyway. So we need to overcome them and say, no fear, no right. fear. Right. And come on board, we'll make a simple app and just, just don't resist. Just open your mind, use it. And if there are areas that you want to improve, let us know and right. just don't say no. All right. Use it. And with this, uh, we come to the end of the session. And uh, like, like you have uh, heard right now, 
Uh, this is very crucial information for your convenience uh, because this is brought to you so that you don't have to travel, you know, um, all the way here and then uh, spend a lot of expenditure, so, which has been um, uh, the trend so far. So this is for our convenience and for the convenience of the people here as well, so who, who collect tax uh, for the tax offices, let me say, to be appropriate. So um, uh, let me also recommend you to download this app, use this. I mean, uh, they have also mentioned uh, uh, the number, toll-free number, if you're not able to use this. Uh, so you can just, just call the, the toll-free number. And, and uh, with this, I hope uh, you will find this app very user-friendly. And uh, until next time, thank you.